11, 3 of 20. So that's next week. And I see uh, New Orleans is getting hit, hit head on right now. So we still need to pray for the storms that are going on right now and the fires, uh, all these people that are losing their homes and out of homes. And also Second Chronicles seven fourteen, And that's for all of us. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then we're going to hear from heaven and we're going to heal. He's going to heal our land. Thank you, Lord. And uh, to pray for our prayer chain. We have 16 people on that. I wish there was more. And, uh, you know, the answer to so many things is prayer, the Word of God, prayer. And where two or three are gathered together in my name. And so tonight, we come together in Jesus' name that we're going to be workmen not a shame, but we're going to be workmen of the Most High God, able to divide the truth. So, Father God, we just pray for these situations that are going on worldwide, especially with this pandemic. And why people don't realize it's serious, it's beyond me, Lord. Uh, that's what I'm saying. For some reason, the church is blind. Help us, Lord. We need to see clearly. So we just ask you to open up our hearts tonight, Lord, as we come to your word, as we open your word tonight. Your word is life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. And the Bible is God speaking to me. And the gospel means the good message or the good news. So I'm bringing you good news tonight. Praise God. The Lord just blessing me with the word. And we've been using uh, tonight's as the gifts and calling of God part two because we had to stop last week. And both Peter and, and Paul said it's not tedious for me to keep telling you the same things over and over again. Or one says to remind you, you already know what I'm going to preach on tonight. If you know, you all know these, most of you know these scriptures, but we be, need to be reminded about them. Like somebody will say something, I say, yeah, I used to hold on to that scripture. I'm so glad I heard it again. And we're using for hope Romans 15, 13. And remember, you can get our notes, our prayer, and also our Bible studies. I try to always have notes for you. So uh, a lot of people don't know what to study. And you could study this message, for instance, probably uh, I've studied it uh, over and over again. And every time I do, as you can see, I got changing notes all over the place. And I did make a few uh, mistakes, just one on Scripture. And I'll share that with you when we get to it. But if you want our, our teachings, it's uh, God's Grace Church, az at gmail.com. And Charles will have, will have you on the list. And I want to uh, thank everybody, if you didn't hear it on Sunday, for praying for our meeting uh, with God's Grace Ministries of Navajo Nation. And we had such a good time. And also uh, to remind you that we're getting together a Sunday morning, Sunday night for prayer. We're not on the internet for Sunday night. Monday night is open. It's not a teaching night. It's a time to greet one another and what's the Lord saying and vice versa. It only lasts 40 minutes. And I want to keep it that way. That way we don't have to worry. You can tuck yourself in bed. You're done before 8. Starts at 7. And then we have Wednesday night. So we're having four times a week when we're getting together. That's better than before. I think that's great. You know, and people are starting to respond to it. Thank you, Lord. So in Romans 15, 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope, remember, expectation, by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we need desperately the power of God right now. And the Bible says if you ask for the Holy Spirit, He'll give Him to you. So ask for Him. If, you, if you're not speaking in tongues, if you don't have your prayer language, it's available to every born-again believer. That's one of the signs Jesus said in Mark 16 would follow us. There's five signs there that are going to follow us. We don't follow signs. If you're following signs, there's a big danger there. 
He calls that an evil generation. But the signs follow us because we're following the sign giver, the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us in that area, Lord. We can't take credit for any signs, any manifestations of the Spirit. It's all Him. We just need to be open to the Spirit tonight. So thank you, Lord. And so we're talking about tonight. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, because a lot of times you don't know how to uh, minister to a, a, a what we call backslidden, uh, a minister or, or, or saint. Uh, they've gone astray and they don't feel like they can get back. They know they're wrong. Uh, if you've got the Spirit of God in you, you know when you sin. And so uh, I want to show you that this is really important that we understand this message to help others and not only ourselves. And in Romans 11:29 on your sheet, I have a few different translations. And, and, and the, uh, the King James says, there, uh, the King James says, for the gifts and calling of God are irrevocable. And, and the King James says, that's the new King James, excuse me. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. Once you get this gift, it's yours forever. And the God's word says, God never changes his mind when he gives gifts or when he calls someone. I just love this stuff. The New Living Translation says, For God's gifts and His call can never be withdrawn. That means even when you're living in sin, believe it or not, you still have the gift. But always remember Galatians chapter 6, I believe it's verse 7 and 8, sowing and reaping. You will sow what, you're, you're, what you sow, you will reap here on earth. And sometimes that isn't easy. So uh, in Romans, because we're already in Romans, in chapter 4, 7 and 8, and th this, we've got to ac accept this tonight, that we're forgiven throughout eternity. But it's, a, it's in Acts 17, 30, it talks that the time has come when all men need to repent. And this should be a daily thing, because remember, you can't sin in your spirit but you can in your soul. This is where we give place to the devil and we've got to learn how to know when it's confusion, that isn't God. When it's fear, that isn't God. And so uh, we have to learn these things as we're growing in Christ. In Romans 4 and 7 and 8, it says, blessed, so that's great, blessed are those whose lawless deeds or iniquities, the King James says, are forgiven. See, they're already forgiven. And whose sins are covered. How are they covered? By the blood. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not charge or impute sin. And so we, we talked a lot about this last uh, part of what we ministered on. I think we had 17 minutes last week. And so we're just rehearsing. In 1 Peter 4, 7 to 12, it, that talks where you hear me talk a lot about this. Each one has a gift, but I, I'd like to read it. In 1 Peter, if you want to turn to it, I'm just going to read two verses in 1 Peter chapter 4. In verse 10 and 11, as each one has, that's past tense, as we each one has received a gift, minister it to one another. So it's to be used. We're to be doers of the word and not hearers only. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God, if anyone speaks, let him speak of the oracles. And I, and I see that. If God has given you something to say, you know, and we can test it with the scripture. That's how we got to test all things. If anyone ministers, a servant of God is a minister. Anybody that ministers is, has to be a servant. Jesus came to serve, not to be served. Let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. So I might prophesy two words. Another person, I've been in 
meetings with prophets, and they go on and on and on and on. You don't remember a thing they said, but if they have it taped, that really does help. But notice, it's just as the faith you have. It might be just something simple, like God bless you. It could be something just right there somebody needs. That in all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and dominion or the power forever and ever. Amen. And so we talked about that last week, and I added in Ephesians 4.16, because it says every joint supplies. Every one of us have to supply. Every part does its share. Every one of us has to do its share. Let's say yours is... Uh, intercession, that, what a gift that is. Cause, and what happens when we're, every joint is surprising? It says it causes growth of the body. Why? For they're edified. There's edification that takes place. And then we found out, which we've already preached on these weeks back, Romans 12, 3 to 8, says each one has been given a measure of faith. So we all start out with the same amount of faith. And it's the same faith uh, Peter says in his uh, epistles. The same, uh, the seven grace gifts, which we found out about those. Then in 1 Corinthians 12, 1 to 11, the nine manifestations of the Spirit. And I was talking to somebody else. There's, see, your prayer language, you can talk in tongues anytime you want to. 120 people were speaking in tongues, all of Acts 10, all of them were speaking in tongues. Acts 19, 12, people were, 12 men were speaking in tongues. And the only place we see there is an interpretation is in Acts 2. But the nine manifestations, it's as the Spirit wills. And I, I made that comment when we were in uh, Mexico a couple of years ago. can't remember quite. It was two years, three years ago. And a lot of us went. There was nine of us. And uh, Elder Marge was praying that she could have the diversities of tongues. And that night she got it. And it was powerful. It like shook the walls. And then the translation came. There was going to be an earthquake. And we found out the next day after we left, there was a major earthquake all over Mexico, a lot of damage. And so that we saw the, the diversities of gifts and the interpretation of gifts. In verse 7 of 1 Corinthians 12, it says, To each one, a, a gift is given to each one for the profit of all. To one is given the word of knowledge. So we're supposed to corporately be moving in these gifts. And you know, in 1 Corinthians 14, 26, it says we can all prophesy, we can all have a tongue, and we can all edify one another. It just goes on and on, all the things we can do. And, you know, in Acts 2, and I bring this up, I haven't lately, but when we were in the church, where are the prophecies? Acts 2 says that your young men and your young women will prophesy. And so it says we will prophesy when the Spirit comes. So we can desire spiritual gifts. That's in 1 Corinthians 14 and 1. It says, pursue love, desire spiritual gifts, especially that you prophesy. In John 15, 16, you did not choose me, the Lord says, but I chose you. I've ordained you to go forth and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father, in my name, I'm going to give it to you. And it has to be the will of God. That's what he's going to give it to you if it's the will of God. And we're in Peter, and so I'd like to show that to you right now because there's so much confusion about foreknowledge. And I, I put in scriptures uh, in, book of Re- in the book of Revelations about the Lamb's book of life. And notice this scripture in 1 Peter, because we're already there, chapter 1 and verse 2. Elect, or 
chosen according to foreknowledge. And this is how, and I've heard this, my brother taught me this, AJ, when uh, I found out the Bible was true. What he saw, he looked ahead and saw that we accepted him and he wrote our name down before the foundations of the earth. And that's, that's in, in the book of Revelation. And also in uh, Ephesians, I believe it's uh, 1, 2 or 3 in that area. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood. So we can rejoice tonight because he chose us. How did he cho choose us? We still, we see Paul the Apostle. He's having us put in prison. Stephen is stoned to death. And then on the way to Damascus, what happens? He falls to the ground because of this great light. Nobody could hear, nobody could see, but it was so bright. And guess what Jesus says? Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And so here's a guy that, and I'm bringing this up just to show you, whatever your past is, look what he was doing to the church. He was persecuting the church. And Jesus didn't say, why did you persecute Al? No, when anybody touches you, they're touching the eye of Jesus because we're the apple of his eye. And he's not going to put up with that for very long. And so notice what it says in Ephesians. And, and I will turn to Ephesians. Uh, you can if you want to, uh, because there's quite a bit here. In Ephesians chapter 1, remember, we're talking about these gifts that we can't lose it, but we still can be a bad example. We can still uh, be sowing things uh, that we shouldn't be sowing because then we got to reap it. You know, like you're driving 90 miles an hour and then you see the red lights and you say, Lord, forgive me. And he says, you're forgiven. I'll pay the price. You're going to pray the, either go to jail or the ticket. Notice in verse 3 what it says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Notice where it is in heavenly places. The Bible is a book of spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you can only do that with the born-again experience. In heavenly places in Christ Jesus, here it is. I just, I know I read it last week, but did we remember this? Verse 4, just as he chose us in him before the foundations of the world, that means before earth even existed. If we've been here a billion years, whatever it is, it even makes God more God to me. He knew us way back then. We should. It says the, that we should be holy and without blame before him. How can, how can that be? Colossians 3, 3 tells us. It says that we're hid in Christ. So when Father God looks at us, all he sees is Jesus. And Jesus is pure. Praise God. Notice, here it is again. Heaven, heaven, having predestinated, or the word foreknowledge, us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. And look at verse 7. Because tonight we're talking about the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And a lot of times, oh, I fail God, I did that. And the devil is beating you to death. Okay, you fail God, Lord, forgive me. Okay, it's the slate's clean, now let's start over. That's what we need to do tonight. We've all blown it. We've all come short of the glory. How hard is it? He's faithful and just to forgive us of our all, all our unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9 in him, we have redemption. We have deliverance through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So I believe for us to press forward, we have to know that we're forgiven. A lot of times all people think about is what they should have done, they could have done. Well, you can't go back and redo it, but you can start the new day now. And so uh, I just, that, that would... I believe was so important. 
And then uh, I'm, uh, you're in Ephesians. Just go over to the book just over, just to the left, Galatians. And we're in chapter 1. And here's Paul telling us, and I know we read this last week, and in verse uh, 13, I want you to notice what it says. For you have heard of my former conduct in Judaism, how I persecuted the church of God beyond measure and tried to destroy it. Over and over again, man has tried to destroy this book. It cannot be done. It's still the number one seller in the world every year. And notice what he says in verse 15. Now remember, he was having us killed. He was putting us in prison. He thought he was right. He even blasphemed. And then he said, I did it out of ignorance. Because remember, there's only one sin you cannot be forgiven. That's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. He didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit until after he got saved. Notice, but when it pleased God, but when it pleased God, when did it please God? who separated in my in separated me from my mother's womb that's when it pleased god the birth of paul pleased god yet god knew what he was going to do how he was going to hurt the church and called me through his grace to reveal his son to me that i might preach him among the gentiles i did not immediately confer with flesh and blood. And so, this being chosen in your mother's womb, I want to show you, I, I, I think I shared this last week, there was so much going on with us trying to keep preaching. So far, we're doing okay, honey? Yep. Oh, praise God. <laughs> in Jeremiah, and Jeremiah, if you want to know what our church is all about, uh, we don't have people rolling on the floor. I've seen more deliver, deliverance with just a simple word uh, of encouragement. or I've even told people, I'm not going to talk to you right now. I'm going to talk to that demon of fear. And uh, the Lord can do many things without nobody else even knowing what's going on. So you don't have to make a show of it. Satan loves us to make a show of it, screaming and yelling. And he just gets so much glory with that until after it's done. And we don't need all that for deliverance. The Lord did it, and he saw the people coming, so he healed them immediately so they wouldn't see him rolling around on the floor. We should take note of that, how Jesus did it. So this has been given to our church at least five times that I know of. In Jeremiah 1, and, and of course that's right after Isaiah. In Jeremiah 1, and I'm going to start with verse 4, whether I read it or not last week, that's okay. This is for us as a, uh, members of God's Grace Church. Each one of us, this is for all of us. Like the head that flows down to the bottom. Everybody should have this. Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. There it is again, foreknowledge. Before you were born, I separated you. And remember, the Bible's God speaking to me. So I write my name in there. I separated you, Al. I ordained you, Al, a prophet to the nations. And, and we're not dealing with nations. And I know somebody really got upset with me because this, this word nations does not mean imaginations. But I say it's, we can use it as imaginations because that's what it says in 2 Corinthians 10. I believe it's verse 4, casting down imaginations. And so we have that power to cast that down. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am young. And amen. I know what that's about when this all happened to me. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am young, for you shall go to to." All who I send you. And Jesus said in John 17, 18, As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Think about that. That right there, we could just preach on that one right now. As the Father has sent you, Lord, you're sending me. Think about that. Put that down someplace. John 17, 18. 
And whatever I command you, Al, you speak. A lot of times uh, we don't like what we're hearing. But this is what I was told. Verse 17. Therefore, prepare yourself, Al, and arise, and speak to them all that I command you. Do not be dismayed before their faces, lest I dismay you before them. And so you got to say what God told you to say. You can't put honey on it. You just got to speak it. And you got to speak it in love. And I'm speaking this in love tonight. This is for us tonight. Do not be afraid of their faces, Al. Remember, the Bible is God speaking to you. Put your name in there. For I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, and we find in Romans 10, 8, where is this? It's, it's in your heart and it's in your mouth. That's the word of God, which he says we preach. Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the, the nations and over the kingdoms to root out, to pull down, to destroy, to throw down, to build, and to plant. And that's what I believe Wednesday night really helps us to build. A lot of times, especially, we need a break during the week. We need to get away from the world. And we need to get into the Word of God, and that's what we do. That's why it's so important. You've got to be careful uh, with all the noises that are going on, and you can miss so much. And so here we're talking about uh, God calling us. The gifts and calling of God are without repentance. But we have to understand, what is this calling? Well, Paul said it was to, sh to show Jesus. And Jesus is the word. Preach the word, Al, not politics, not social things. Preach the word. And I keep hearing that in my spirit. And so we, we talked about Ephesians 1.18, the eyes of your understanding. Oh, I missed a good scripture. In Jeremiah 5.4, I have to say that. It says, Jeremiah, when you preach the word, the, the I, I better read it because this, this is really important. Jeremiah 5. Some of you might still be there. Jeremiah 5. I didn't put it on your notes. In Jeremiah 5. Remember, our God is a consuming fire. This is what happens when we preach what God gives us to preach. Verse 14. We're in Jeremiah 5.14. Therefore, thus says the Lord of God of hosts, because you speak this word, what word? What he said in the beginning, what he what he was told to preach. Behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire. And this people would, the wood represents the natural man, the soulish realm, and it shall devour them. What is it doing? It burns away the shaft. As we hear this word, like, Lord, how come I'm not doing what you told me to do? Why am I, why am I allowing the past to hold me back? Why did I give place to the devil? That's why tonight we can be set free. We can start all over again. That's what I love about Jesus. His word is new every morning. He's blessed right now. He'll bless us right now. And so uh, in a, we've talked about last week, I believe, about the enlightenment. We need the enlightenment of God's word. And that we should pray that over each other. And that's in Ephesians 1.18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what the hope of his calling is and what are the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. Where to know these things, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And in Ephesians 4, 1 to 6, we're not going to turn there. Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. So it's a worthy thing. And we're going to start going to the right just as soon as we get to Philippians, was right after Ephesians. We were just there. And in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 14, Paul's saying up here, not that I've arrived, but 
or, or already made perfect or mature. But what is he saying? I've been apprehended by God. We've been apprehended by God. He's pulling us. Picture Paul down on the ground and he's blinded for three days. And God says, I want you to go to a place called straight. Now, isn't it amazing how the Bible uses names? He's going to get straight there. And he says, a guy by the name of Ananias is going to come lay hands on you. And what happened? He starts preaching the gospel almost right after. He went from the law to grace because he found out God was real. It wasn't religion anymore. It was a personality, a relationship, excuse me. So he goes on and says, I, verse 14, I press. And, and this word can mean deacon, servant. A deacon is a servant, a, a table, uh, cleans tables, anything to do with serving. It also means suffer, press forward. And what are we supposed to be pressing forward to? After you have done all, stand. Too many people give up before it happens. It says, after we've done everything we know how to do, stand. After you've done all, stand. That's in Ephesians 6. I press towards the goal for the prize of the high or the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So we need to push into our ministry. Uh, remember, I say this a lot, but uh, one of my mentors, Paul Hunter, he always told me, Al, we're like a bud. The more you use your gift, the greater the, the flower. If you don't use your gift, what happens? There's no scent. It doesn't come out. And so it's up to us be doers of the word. And I, uh, we're just going to the right now. Just go over. It's real close. First Timothy. And Edison just reminded me of this too. Is uh, th This is a scripture you can fight with. Uh, I'm so grateful that when I started, I started in a Pentecostal type church because I never heard prophecy. I never knew about prophecy. And, uh, you know, all of us have had prophecy spoken over us. And, well, if you haven't, we should have had. In 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, this I, I commit to you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you that by them you may wage the good warfare. It, what, it, what did we say? For the gifts and calling are God are without repentance. But see, we need to understand God has given us a gift. And because of that gift, whether I'm using it or not, there's so many prophecies that I've heard over, over us, this church, and over me, that I can stand on those. Why was he telling Paul this? Because they hadn't happened yet. If, if, I, if they've come true, I don't have to ask for them anymore. I thank God for them. But right now, by faith, I have to thank God that I'm going to see that. And in some of the open visions, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live that one day. And I praise God for that. And in chapter 4, notice verse 14. Remember, we're, 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 we're stirring up all of us, because we're all ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think you're realizing that. If you're chosen, you're called. If you're called, you're chosen. Remember, foreknowledge. That's so important. There's so much confusion about that one word. In verse 14 of chapter 4, do not neglect the gift. Remember, the gift and callings of God are without repentance. Or I like the, this translation. Uh, For God's gifts and His call can never be withdrawn. Praise God. Ooh. When his gifts, when he is, when he gives gifts or when he calls someone, they never change. He never changes his mind. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy and the laying on of hands of the eldership. And then you go over to 2 Timothy. And Here's Paul, he's in prison, and he's got to deal with his son called Timothy. And Timothy is losing a lot of the church because of the persecution. And so, and down in verse 6, it says, Therefore, what's it therefore? Everything we just read up here. 
I remind you to stir up the gift. And uh, this is an amazing word. Uh, it's uh, like kindling a fire. And it's also, uh, I, I put in the Greek, it's also uh, kindling anew, inflame one's mind. That's Tyler's. It also means strength. So we, we can have strength when we stir up the gift. Now watch this. Therefore, because Romans 1.11, Paul said, I, I couldn't wait to get to Rome to impart some spiritual gifts into you. So gifts have been imparted into us by uh, uh, especially the fivefold ministry. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Amazing, huh? And then in, in uh, chapter 2 and verse 1, I, I want to read a couple, a couple of scriptures here. You, therefore, my son, he's talking to us, just like he's talking to you right in me right now. Therefore, my son, be strong in the what? Grace. Saved by grace. Given gifts by grace. Being healed by grace. Walking in the Spirit by grace. The law can't do it. Love is our law. Love. It even says if your enemy is thirsty, give him something to drink. It's just opposite of what we think. We want to get rid of him. See, Christians have a different way to look at things. I should say disciples have a different way of looking at things. Two, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit. And that means to deposit, like put money in the bank. I'm depositing into you right now. You deposit into me. Many of you, uh, Lois today, she talk, called me today. It's so good to hear from her. She loves it up in Hebrew. And commit these to faithful men. And I, when I pray this there almost every night, faithful men and women who what? who will be able to teach others also. The, you, therefore, Al, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus. And then there's three levels here that we, we've talked about many times. And that, that was on your sheet, which is 2 Timothy 1-2. That should be 2 Timothy 2-2. Two, two. And then go over to chapter 4. Remember, we're talking about the... Uh, for the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. And I, I don't know why I'm so burdened about that because I've heard of so many ministers like retiring. We retire these elders that we need in the body of Christ. And a lot of backslidden preachers that could be working for God right now, but uh, they've been look, nobody helps them. And uh, let me read that scripture about if one of us fall. Here's what we're supposed to do. That's in Galatians chapter 6. Let me just read it. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in a trespass, you know, like, uh, let's just say committed adultery uh, or cheated on his books or something, is overtaken in a trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such as one in a spirit of gentleness, not beat them when they're down, Help them up. I've witnessed over the years how uh, one minister that uh, everybody turned against him. And what that man did for God later on in his life was unbelievable. Because restore such as one in the spirit of gentleness. Consider yourself lest you also be tempted. And I, I know a while back, many years ago, there was one of the major preachers that was caught in a, in a scene and many pastors were pointing a finger and within six months, a lot of them were doing the same thing. So you got to be careful. I have to be careful how I point the finger and that's sin. Gossip is sin. And then you got to reap it. You know, now the temptation comes. Now the door's open. And so notice what it says in chapter 4 of 2 Timothy and verse 1. 
And I want you to put your name in front of that word preach. And remember, we're preaching good news tonight. This message is going to help people that are backslidden or wonder, what did I do wrong? Or could I have done more? And the devil is whispering in your ear, you shouldn't have, you could have. Lord Jesus, forgive me right now. Wash me in the blood. Renew my mind right now. Just set me free right now, Lord. Call upon me and I'll answer thee, he says. Re preach the word. When? When are we supposed to be preaching the word? Be ready. You never know when God's going to call on you if you're ready. I notice the Lord has blessed me. I'll be studying something and somebody calls me and I just happen to have the message right there. Uh, like when uh, Pastor Helen, the director on the reservation at, with God's Grace Ministries of Navajo Nation, and she asked me to minister. And she says, we're, we're talking about basic doctrines, going back to basics. And I says, well, I just got done preaching Hebrews 6, 1 and 2, the six basic doctrines of the church. And so I was pretty much prepared because I spent quite a bit of time on that. And so he prepares us if we're diligent. And so preach the word, be ready, you know, uh, especially have a strong concordance if you can't find it. Every word in the Bible is in there. And you need, everybody needs one of them. If you don't have it on your electronics, which to me is easy, I just push a button and the answer comes up. Preach the word. Be ready in season, out of season. Convince, rebuke. Sometimes we have to rebuke. Exhort, lift up. I'm trying to lift up some of you that are thinking of backsliding or have backslidden. With all long suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, sound teaching, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth. And, it, you know, 25 times in the New Testament, he that hath an ear, hear him hear, let him hear. And it talks about how you've become dull of hearing. Oh, I've heard all that before, you're dull of hearing. Paul and Peter said, it doesn't bother me to remind you of the things I've already told you. And I've been accused of teaching the same thing over and over again. Praise God, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing then. And be turned into fables. But you, Al, remember we're putting our name in here. Be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Not everybody's going to like us. Jesus said, if they hated me, they're going to hate you also. Do the work of an evangelist. We're all evangelists. We're all been called to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Fulfill your ministry. And I say amen to that. I have it on your notes in 2 Peter 1.10. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. We're to do this with all diligence. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. And because we went over that recently about all these things. Uh, it's like just a few things we have to do. And it says you won't fall. And in Ephesians 2.10, for we are his workmanship. And that workmanship is a thing that is made. And in Jeremiah 17, I believe it's 17, it talks about that the potter and the clay, we're the clay. And the Bible taught we're to be uh, trans transformed into his form, into his image. And how does he do that? He, he does that, you know, going through trials, tribulations, not that God has to do them. We're actually, we, I think 99.9% .9 of our problems are self-afflicted. Could be wrong about that, but that's how I feel about me. But we are his workmanship created, or recreated, the Amplified Bible says. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, we are, not maybe, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. And how do you keep that? See, this is, this is a done deal. Once you realize you're already forgiven, 
that eternal sin, you're forgiven, whatever that is. And, and I, I just see Jesus standing there before me. He's my shield. He's my protection. Taking the shield of faith, as long as we keep our eyes on Jesus, we're not going to get zinged. Those fiery darts are not going to destroy us. But a lot of us get destroyed because, oh, why did I do that? And the devil says, because you're an idiot and you just, you know, that's what you want to do. And then the fight starts and we have to learn to say, shut up, devil. Lord Jesus, forgive me. Lord, my mind right now, my soulish realm is ruling. In Jesus name, settle down. It's okay to lay hands on yourself and pray for yourself or call somebody you can trust that's not going to tell anybody else about your problem. For we are his work workmanship. How are we created? In Christ Jesus for good works. Think about that. Good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should or we will walk in them. So before the foundations of the earth, God chose you, separated you in your mother's room. And you can say, but you don't know what my, I've had so many people tell me, yeah, but you don't know what I've been, where I've been, what I've done. And see, once you get freed from that, you don't have to be that anymore. Uh, you know, we talked about this Monday night about the, the bloodline. And it, the bloodline, we have a new blood, bloodline in our spirit man. The soulish man, yeah. And so, but we have to remind ourselves we have a new heavenly father. We can go to God, God the Father. We can come to him right now. He's faithful and just to forgive us of all our unrighteousness. So we all need to be forgiven. We're up here, not here. And once you get that down, that the spirit is whole, but we're, I am delivered, I'm being delivered, and I will be delivered. And that's in 2 Corinthians 1.10. And so when we start realizing, I'm free, I'm free to serve God, and then what usually happens, the devil is going to, what does he do? He comes and he tries to get back into the situation. And that's where we have to learn, put the shield up. Even if you have to do this, pretend you have a shield and say, no, you're not coming past the shield because Jesus is standing before me. And you've got to speak the word, speak the word. Jesus, three times after he was tempted by the devil, after 40 days of fasting, what did he do? It is written, and he quoted scripture. It is written, and he quoted scripture. It is written, and he quoted scripture. The devil quoted scripture, but he missed out parts. Made a mistake on both of them. Remember, he reads the Bible too. He wants to know what we know. And uh, he's been around a long time to learn a lot. So, we need to be diligent. So I just, I'm just so happy we got to share this message. Are we still okay, honey? So it was, Charles, it was, and Steve, and Rick, and Pat. Uh, thank you for helping us. <laughs> Barbara, she's been working hard at this too. We spent a lot of time on this and come to find out. Well, we've got a new one ordered. iPad. iPad. Yeah, there was a faulty iPad. And uh, we bought, well, at least we have two extra mics now if we need to. <laughs> not the mic and not the Wi Fi. Yeah, it wasn't the Wi Fi. We were told we had to, uh, all that our house and everything else. And so, anyway, uh, praise God, it was figured out. And the devil isn't going to knock us down. You notice I didn't get too excited about this uh, because I got to trust God. And uh, tonight I got a little excited because I thought I left my mic because we finished Sunday's message on Monday in case some of you didn't get it. Uh, and I thought, oh, Barbara, I left the mic at church. <laughs> that was at 6 tonight. And come to find out it was in my briefcase. So whew, knowing me, it's easy for me to do something like that, to forget something. And so I, I just, I, I just pray that 
no matter what you've done in the past, in Philippians 3, it says, Paul said, after he was having us killed, he says, forgetting those things which are past, I press towards the prize of the upward calling in Christ. And that's what we need to do. Right now, uh, there's, there's members of, of, of the body of Christ that don't know if their family's saved. Uh, they're afraid to ask them. We need to come boldly to the throne room of grace, and we need boldness. And so if you need boldness tonight, I want you to agree with me. I, I pray a lot about boldness. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, because it, it is the power of God unto salvation. But I don't go around preaching to everybody and condemning people. I like it when people ask me something. I uh, just want to be a witness and they can see uh, if we live the life or we don't live the life. And so right now, Lord, Father God, I come to you in Jesus' name by the power. Holy Spirit, empower us right now to take hold of this message that right now there is no, uh, I, I, just the gift and calling of God are without repentance. I wanted to say something else. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance, where we can be washed right now in the blood. Lord, forgive me right now, especially for doubt and unbelief and having fear. We're, we're not to fear any man. And man made this virus, so we're not to fear it either. And so, Father God, I speak boldness over us like in Acts 4. You even shook the building. I'm asking you to shake us tonight. Get rid of all the garbage that's been holding us back, that Satan's been beating us over the head, that we're not worthy. We are worthy because you knew us before there was even a world. You set us apart. When we came out of the womb, you were smiling at us, Lord. <laughs> you can just see you smiling at us, say, well, this is my son, you know, and this is my daughter. This is, I'm going to be their father. I'm going to be their all in all. So praise God tonight, Lord. We just accept your word tonight because it's truth. You said your word is truth. And you said your truth is our shield and buckler. So we claim you tonight, our shield, that we have boldness to proclaim the mysteries of the gospel of Christ. That is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So with that, I'm going to close. Anything to add, honey? Nope. Uh, good night. And don't forget communion on Sunday. And prepare yourself, 1 Corinthians 11. And have a blessed rest of the week. I'm going over to see my daughter tomorrow. So praise God. Love you guys. Take care.